Hi, this is comic artist Ken Langraff, and I'm going to be uh, doing a demonstration here to show you what my new book is. It's called Drawing Lessons from Comic Master Comic Book Artists. Drawing Lessons from Master Comic Book Artists. And what I did in here is put everything I knew and learned from Gil Kane, being his assistant, what I learned from Rich Buckler, what I learned from Howard Nostrin, what I learned from Wally Wood. So I took everything that I learned from these guys, and especially Jack Kirby, Steranko. I studied all these guys. This book is $25, and it's an amazing book. Uh, here on the cover, you can see where I took a one point. Like, it's not a perspective, it's a impact. I took a point in the middle here and created this figure from this point. So that's one of the tricks. Uh, they use that all the time on the Marvel covers, DC covers. Gil Kane uh, told me about this. Now this book has a lot of examples of classic comic book stuff from my uh, f reference files, my swipe files, everything like that. This is called the di diagonal close-up shot. Uh, what that means is there's like a diagonal, see his nose? And the head is uh, placed on the diagonal. And this one here, you got like Reed Richards on the diagonal. You got the thing on a straight up and down uh, line. This one makes it interesting. You see here, he's on a diagonal. And... Uh, I always, I use this effect many, many times. I took it from a couple different drawings uh, where you have the eyes and you zoom in on them. And then of course you can go really crazy and do extreme close up here, like on this Gil Kane drawing. Okay, you can see the power of a diagonal composition. When I was drawing Nightwing and Flamebird and Hawkman, I used this technique a lot when I showed them flying. What that was is called multiple figure action panels. In other words, a figure starts out and it's jumping in many different poses. Until it's about to come down and hit somebody or land on somebody. It's like an acrobat thing, but it's the way the comic artist did it was multiple figure action. Gene Day used this a lot. Stranko used it. Bernie Kriegstein used it. Uh, this is cool. This is a Ross Andrew panel from The Flash. Now we see The Flash. He's walking through a crowd. The camera goes on him. Now this is all in a diagonal. You can see it here. And it goes to a close-up of him. Neil Adams used this a lot. He used it on a Batman or it was Batman stories, and he also used it on uh, Dead Man. So the figure is being tracked on a diagonal. Goes from small, medium to large close up. I also like this here. You see that these uh, figures in the background. Look how the, he threw a shadow from the figure. This is Esposito inking him. And he threw the girl here, her shadow, onto this guy. Wood did this a lot. Makes something that's boring look exciting. Uh, what we have here is something that I call shooting through. What that means is you're shooting through the bookstore window here where this kid's looking into the window. So you're shooting through the window. In this shot, the kid's in a library, and this is really clever. You, Gil can use this, but some use it. I've seen this a lot. Stranko used it all the time. You're shooting through the shelves of the book, the library. That would have been a boring shot if the kid's just looking at the books. But by throwing a foreground element, I've really wrecked up books. Look at that. And this one is ingenious. 
you're shooting through a newsstand. Peter Parker is over there reading a newspaper, right? Boring, but it's exciting as heck because they shot it through the point of the newsstand. Look at the guys giving him a quarter for the paper. That's really clever. So you want to use this technique a lot whenever you can. It could be a table. It could be a lamp in the foreground. It could be anything. Just make it exciting. I also thought this was cool panel because uh, he's reaching for a book here, but there's a shadow from his body thrown onto his hand. Really cool. I use this a lot too. Rich Buckler did this a lot. Uh, and Walter Simonson did it. Uh, I call it the animated effect. What that means is there's a panel of something like the guy shot somebody here, right? They're zooming in on the guy that's shot. It's the same pose, but the guy's walking away from the camera. And he walked even further away, and all he did was redraw the pose on the bottom. Medium, larger, and close-up. Well, the figure, which is tracked, goes from being a full figure to a walking away figure to another walking wave figure. That's really intense. Uh, John Buscemi used this a lot too. I saw him use it in the Avengers. And this is a classic effect, uh, obviously something like a movie effect. You see a, a head, you don't know who it is or anything. The shadow is over him and all you see is his eyes. The camera moves back and start to reveal the character's face till finally you see him. This could have been reversed too. It could have been like this. Then that shot and that shot. I used that a lot when I was drawing Nightwing and Flamebird. I always thought that was really cool. Now, how to make a boring drawing exciting? Well, throw shadows all over it. Masenla did this. Well, he would use this. Duranko used it. So what you're doing is here's a, a shot of a guy with his hands in his pocket, okay? It's boring below angle so it's exciting but he used the drapes to throw shadows onto his body i use this all the time so you're taking a boring panel and making it exciting by throwing shadows russ Heath did this in gi combat i remember he had like you'd always draw like nazis uh shooting machine guns and he'd show them where they're hiding and the shadows would be all draped over their uh bodies and faces that was really cool Now, this is a guy here. He sees somebody coming into the library, and he's got shadows on, making it look mysterious. Okay, so whenever you can, throw these uh, shadows over somebody. Gene Day used, worked the hell out of this in uh, Master of Kung Fu, and so did Galassi. Okay, this is called... Uh, focus point it's not perspective what you're doing is you're taking a point in the middle of the, fig, fig, of the page here and then fanning out lines that create the pose look at this he's doing this on purpose this is of course skill came but this jack kirby did this all the time John Semma did it. They all knew this. And, and guess who told me about this skill came when i was very young and was assisting me i was like 22 years old he said Always use focal point. You see how the head forms into that? Look at this. You see how it's all created? The hand is being forced into that. Even the stuff over here, the supersonic, whatever this is, it's all fitting into this focal point. Look at this. See this here? Like a swirling... Oh, wow, is that ever cool. Swerves from the back, to, and it goes right off the front off the panel. So we call that uh, focal point. And that's a good way to make up figures. A lot of times when I, when I start uh, drawing, and I don't know what I'm doing, I just like put these points down and then create the figure going to the points. Now, Marie Severin gave me this page. This changed my life because she told me a major trick. This is called 
overlapping figure groups. She told me Jack Kirby did this all the time. This is Larry Lieber, and of course he knows what to do here, being Stanley's brother and right-hand man cartoonist when they couldn't get Jack Kirby. So everything is being overlapped. The gun is overlapping. It's not just falling. And also, this is one hell of a drawing. Look how he drew that. That's one of those uh, Winchester rifles. And he drew it in perspective. In other words, the point's here, and it's going out like this, and it gets bigger and smaller as it goes away. That's really intense. What's unique about this, because I've recently drawn a comic book with this Winchester, and, and this is a cocking device that was used by the rifleman, so you could fire the gun real fast. You go like this, bam, 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 bam. So he knew all that when he drew that gun. I thought that was brilliant. Now, everything's being overlapped. The main figure here is overlapping this guy in the background. Kid Colt or whatever this guy, Rawhide Kid. I guess it's Rawhide Kid. Look at the Rawhide. Everything is overlapping the other finger. So, in other words, as one shape, look at this. Everything is overlapped. Now... There's another guy firing out of the, coming into the panel and everything is overlapped. In fact, I'm going to move the camera here so we can see this whole picture. It's all overlapped. This kind of changed my life when she told me this because uh, I used it all the time after she told me it. Overlap all the figures. Don't just draw a separate figure like this and then leave a space. I do that sometimes just for this composition, but uh, best thing and the most powerful image, because it should read like a cookie cutter, she told me. Like if you silhouetted this, it's all one shape, okay? So this is in my book. And I'm gonna end up here with this technique. This is called body cutoff shots. So what it's talking about, the whole body's not here, it's just, like the hand in the gun holster figure. And this is interesting because you got that forearm guy here in the foreground. And look at these little figures here. He did them as a group. This guy's separate at diagonal. This is really intelligent. This guy's straight up and down, separated from everybody. In this shot, you got the body cut off is the feet running, legs running. And here we got this guy laying down dead. I think that's the, I don't know, White Cobra or where the heck it was. One of those cool, those martial arts characters. And the cool part about it is, is there's a foot in the foreground. I think he's wiped this from Gil Kane too. Look, that looks like Gil Kane pose. And this one's really good. I was working as assistant to Rich Buckler at the time, and I saw him draw this panel. He's got a guy that stole the... Uh, necklace from this carriage and he's running away but he decided not to draw the horse he did a body cut off the hand and the leg on the horse that was really clever i thought here we got like the feet gil Kane did this twice in this panel look he's got the body cut off as the foot then he's got the body cut off as the hand Okay, so you can buy this book for $25, and I think it's $7 postage. And you can either order it from me directly by messaging me, or you can go on eBay and order it from there. Obviously, I would rather have you buy it from me because I can keep all the money. <laughs> so uh, I think it's a good idea for if you were, you're a young comic book artist to invest in this. Oh, here's one more panel, the hands. They use this a lot. Hands in the foreground throwing spells. This could be Dr. Doom. It could be Conan. It could be anybody. And you see the result here. Okay. So uh, this is one of my books. My newest one. And I think you should uh, buy this and put it in your collection if you want to be a comic book artist. Study what the old uh, artists did, new and did, and the Bronze Age artists did. Okay. Talk to you later. This is Ken Langraff signing off.